Have you ever tried hosting a service, say a database or a website, but then you couldn't access it over the internet? I've had that happen many times, and the thing that's bitten me the most over my career has been a misconfigured bind address. That's all this video is about, bind addresses. One caveat before I begin, I'm going to cover a very thin slice of what's going on here. Networking and routing are deep and complex topics, and I just want to get us to a basic understanding on these bind addresses. Here is a very simple program. It starts an HTTP server that no matter what you pass in will always respond with hello world. And then we can customize the address that it listens on via the command line. That's it. That's the only code for this video, and we're not going to be changing this. So if you don't understand that it starts a server that responds with hello world, then you're good. So if I go run this right now and I pass in an address of 127.0.0.1, it'll spit out a URL that when I click, we'll show hello world as we expect. Let's focus on the main attraction. What is this thing? Well, for one, bind address isn't an official term. You might hear it as listen address or just host name in some place. So the way I'm defining it is that a bind address is the address that you tell a service to listen on. And in our case, we told it to listen on 127.0.0.1. This is known as the loopback address because it loops back to your own machine. So if I were to give you this code and you ran this, you could also use this address because it would refer to your machine. Our goal is to get this service to be accessible on the internet. Well, I know my public IP address, so can't I just paste it into the browser and use that? And unfortunately, no, it says this site can't be reached. We know because this is a video on bind addresses what the problem must be, but imagine if you encountered this in the wild and you didn't know what to do. It could be any number of problems. Maybe you have the wrong address, maybe you have the wrong port, maybe you can't route to this address at all because the two computers are on separate networks, maybe the firewall is blocking you, maybe it's not even a networking issue and your server crashed a while ago and nothing is serving requests. The point is that if you're ever in this situation, you need to know enough to be able to get out of it, and a misconfigured bind address is one such problem. So knowing that we probably want to change this bind address, what if we just specified the public IP address that I have? And what we get back is address not available. I guess we're going to have to learn something else about networking after all here. We know that 127.0.0.1 and my public IP are both addresses, but what I didn't say is that these are both associated with network interfaces. A network interface is simply a way for your computer to talk with a network. It's sort of like how a user interface is a way for you to talk with your computer. A network interface can be physical, for example, a chip that supports Wi-Fi, or it could be software. The loopback interface is actually a software interface. You don't need a chip or a card to support it. You can look at all your interfaces using the if config command. If stands for interface in this case, and we have a lot of them. But if you look at the very first one, it's LO0. The LO is for loopback. And there's our loopback address that I mentioned earlier. We also have two IPv6 loopback addresses. If I were to search here for my public IP address, it would say that it's not found. The reason why is because my computer doesn't have that public IP address. My computer is actually connected to a router, and it's the router that has that public IP. It then assigns a different internal IP address to my computer. And we could search for that here. I have the EN0 interface. This is Ethernet. And there's the IP that my router assigns. So now what we'll do is we'll run this server again, and we'll use the internal IP address. If I were to load up this page that gets spit out, it will work, but it will also work now over my public IP address because it's the router that's sending it to me over my internal IP address. To be clear, you can only bind to one address at a time. So the reason why it looked like two addresses are working is that my computer is only ever seeing this one address. It doesn't know about the public IP. What this also means is that since we can only bind to one address, if I try reloading this page, it doesn't matter how many times I click this button, it'll always say this site can't be reached because we haven't bound to the loopback address anymore. We bound to my internal IP address. If we want to listen to every possible interface that we have, we would pass in the wildcard address 0000. And so when I do this, we get a URL out of here that will work, but then we could also use the loopback address. We can also use the public IP address. We can also use the router assigned internal address. And what we can't use, and this is a little bit strange, is we can't use the IPv6 loopback address. For that, you need to bind to the IPv6 wildcard address, colon, colon, zero. And now every single one of these addresses will work, IPv4 or even the IPv6 address. So when your service isn't available on the internet, but it works in testing, consider trying a different bind address. And so that you don't need to keep testing individual ones, just try the wildcard one right off the bat. If that works, then cool, you found your problem. If that doesn't work, then you're in this situation where it could be any number of other problems. And for me, the most often misconfigured thing after the bind address is the firewall. So I would start there, but for specifics, I'd have to make another video on that. There is a downside to always using the wildcard bind address, and that's that you may be exposing your service without realizing it. So when you knowingly expose your service, great, cool, bind to whatever you want. 
But when you're in testing, you probably don't want that to be accessible over the internet. And if you have exposed ports in your firewall, then people could access that service. And you might wonder, well, who's going to actually find that? Probably no humans are going to find that. But if you've ever looked at raw server traffic, you'll see all sorts of random requests from all over the world. And some are benign, but some are just probing for known vulnerabilities. Maybe you're hosting a Python server and there's a known Python issue and someone out there is just trying to exploit that. So you do have to be careful at doing this all the time, but you can protect yourself in other ways. I hope you like this video. I am not a networking expert. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Maybe collectively as YouTube commenters, we can all answer them. I do make content. I try to make it every week, tech related content. Usually if you like this video, please do check out other ones, consider subscribing and regardless, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day.